Hey, it's Ted here. I'm working on a V8 270. It's a EVC D product. And I got a question from one of the YouTube people out there that are asking questions about power trim, calibration, uh, and setup procedures for an EVC D platform engine. So I've got uh, a trim sender here. I'm gonna go over the trim uh, sender installation and the actual calibration of it. And I'll go over the EVC diagnostic procedures on the display screen. I've got one right here that needs to be adjusted and set up. And I've got also the actual setting unit. I'll show you how to remove and install it uh, and how to calibrate it. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the display screen. And we got the key on and I have a remote control here, simple panel installation and the first thing that comes up is it says a power trim failure power trim cannot be controlled emergency trim hold down the end button and use the power trim panel button and that way you can trim it up it will trim down but it will not trim up and you can see there is no number there as well okay so the drive will trim down and you see there's no angle but it won't trim up it just gives you a beat there is an override for the center mount handle like this, and it says to hold the neutral button in. I don't have one, but with EVC with a center mount control, simply hold the trim button in and just wait. Now five, six seconds, something like that, and then it'll trim up, okay? So you can trim the drive up this way. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna go over the actual trim sensor, and I wanna show you how the trim sensor, how to diagnose the problem, uh, more than likely the trim sensor fails. You have to replace it, obviously, but how do you know if the trim sensor has failed or if it's the wiring up to the engine? So we're gonna look at the wiring on the actual trim sensor next. Okay, from the workshop manual, I have some jumper wires I've made up that fit within the trim sender switch and then I've dialed the new trim sender in at about 10.6 ohms. The book tells me it should be 11 plus or minus one ohms. Um, once you get this set to this point, then you're gonna install that into the assembly, and you have a couple of screws here. Just line it up, get the screws in there, and the torque specs for the screws. Don't over tighten the screws, you'll break the housing. So the torque spec for these screws is 21 inch pounds, so you really need a small, inch pound torque wrench to do this to set it up so it's not so it doesn't get damaged once that's installed then what you're going to do is you're going to do the drive calibration and that I'm going to show you on the display after I go through the repair of that so something else that I wanted to show you was how to take this connector apart so this connector is a little bit of a uh, a challenge for if you've never taken one apart again it is a plastic housing so the first thing you have to do is you have to get this black plastic clip off because you have to take this off to remove the trim center from the transom assembly. All right, so we need to take this plastic piece off. So what you're gonna do is take a small flat screwdriver and put it in here and pry up on one side, slide it to the other side and pry it up on the other side until that plastic piece comes off. There we go, slide that up. So the other end, now that I've got this loose, I have to get in here and if you can see in here, there is a little plastic tab right here that I can touch it with the actual tool. And you just reach in there with a pair of needle nose and grab it from both sides and pull it straight out. So I'll grab a pair of needle nose and I'll pull that next plastic piece out. All right, so I'm gonna reach in here with a pair of needle nose. I'm gonna grab that center tab and grab it firmly and pull it straight out. So there's that plastic piece that comes out. Now the inside of it, there are little plastic tabs and you take this pick tool and this is one that I've used for a long time. It's an actual Delphi pick tool and uh, you can purchase these online. They're reasonably inexpensive. There's a part number Right, so I'm just gonna draw a little picture and I wanna make sure that the little lock tab goes up. And you have your two raised pieces like this, so that kind of gives me an indication of what it's gonna look like. And then I've got my 
three terminals inside and they are going to be solid black and brown and then the center is green and then the other end is solid black so there are my three colors so when I take it out I know how to put them back in and they are labeled on the outside terminals one two and three so terminal three is the black and brown wire so they are also labeled in the book and it's basically solid black it's one green is number two and solid black and brown is number three on the actual terminal housing right here as well so i've written that down can't make that mistake now when i go to put it back together so next part is taking this connector out and taking this connector out isn't very hard but i'll try to show you this as best i can so what we're going to do is we're going to look inside here and you are going to see that there is a tab down inside it's a plastic tab so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on this far side and i'm going to grab the wire in my hand I'm going to wrap my finger around it so I can push on the connector. So I'm going to push up on the connector. So what I want to do is just be ready to pull that wire out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip my tool in here and push that tab up. I have to put it between the wire and then I can pull on the wire and pull the wire out. So once I get it started, it'll come right out. So that little tab, and this is why this tool comes in so handy. And there we go, there's the first one. Comes out real easy. We've got the second one here. I'm gonna get my tool in there, meter shutting off. There's the second one comes out. And then the third one, little tab is just above the actual connector itself. So just slide your tool in there, push up a little bit. And there's your three wires. So now here are your three wires and you remove this. So now you can take this piece off and you can pull this through the transom and run the next one. So what I typically do is I run a tag line through the transom and I pull it through the transom. And then what I do is I take the rope on the other end of the string and I tape up this new harness and I run that back through. So it's an easy way to snake that back in. Now when you're gonna put these back in, it's real easy. To put them back in and you're trying to figure out which way do they go all right and the lock tab holds them in place they're kind of universal in which way they go but so i'm just going to push that through until it locks i'm going to take my next connection here and my next wire is green i'm going to push that through until it snaps and then the final wire I'm going to push that through until that one snaps. So there's the three back in place. And the green wire actually does have some type of a tracer. And I think it's, I can't tell if it's red or brown, but it's black with a tracer, the green wire with a tracer, and then the solid black wire on the end. And again, number one was the solid black wire. I wrote that down over here and I've got the connections all back the way they go. Then just to put this piece back on, just snap it in place. Okay, last but not least, we got the connectors in there. Don't forget to put this red plastic piece in there and that just slips back in there. Real easy. Take again your needle nose pliers. We'll give it over the connectors and then make sure it's all the way seated like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the calibration of this connector after it's installed. Okay, I have an EVC-E set up here, but an EVC-D, the functionality is exactly the same. Uh, if you have a top mount control, it's simply the throttle only button is the button that you're gonna use for this calibration setup. And then if you have a side mount control on the handle here, there's an actual neutral button. You're gonna push that button in for the calibration. So let's, let's go through the calibration. Wakey, wakey. So when you're gonna put the trim sender back in, make sure the drive is fully trimmed all the way down. 
So now that it's trimmed all the way down, what I want to do, and you could see it says it's negative 40, it's not calibrated correctly. There is no negative 40. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to recalibrate the drive. And it's quite easy to do. You just put it in calibration mode. So again, if you have a top mount, you push and hold on the throttle only button. And on the side mount control, I'm going to push and hold on the actual neutral button. And it will say throttle only activated. Hold that in until you get to the point where you can actually see the calibration cell. So once I've held that button in for a period of time, it will come up as in calibration mode. You get about 45 seconds before it comes out. But what I'm going to do next is I don't need to calibrate the controls. I just got to calibrate the drive. So I just click it up once. So trim up once. And now the drive, whether you have a seven inch display, a four and a half inch display, or a two and inch, two inch display, it says power trim set the maximum. So I'm gonna trim the drive all the way up and I'm gonna leave a little bit of room between the top of the drive and the swim platform, maybe an inch or so, because you can override it a little bit at the end as I'll demonstrate. So I'm gonna trim it up. And that's pretty good there. So we're going to pretend there's a swim platform there and we're not going to crush into the swim platform. All right. so the next thing I want to do is just click on that neutral button again on the side or the throttle only button. Click it once. And at that point it changes to set the minimum position and the same thing here. It says to push that button and then set the minimum. So I'm going to trim it all the way down until it's bottomed out. You can do this on a trailer, you can do it in the water, but I would definitely recommend you do this on a trailer while it's out of the water, just to make sure the trim sender works. Now that it's all the way down to the bottom, all I have to do is hit that neutral button again on the side mount, or the throttle only button again in the actual center mount. And for either E, V, C, D, or E, this works. And that's it. It should be calibrated. So now if I trim, hit the trim up button, it should be about negative five. So there we go, negative five degrees. That tells me that sender works and it trims up and let's just watch and see if it actually stops at that swim platform point. So to verify that it's calibrated correctly, I'm gonna trim it all the way up until it stops and I'm gonna see what that angle is. So I wanna see these numbers change nice and smooth and that tells me I have a good trim sensor. So coming up 13, 14, Okay, so there's 31 degrees. Okay, if you have a mechanical system with non-EVC, then the maximum height of the drive, again, is adjusted by putting uh, what we call pucks inside the pistons, and that limits the trim pistons to 32, 42, or 52 degrees maximum height. These drives for EVC are all 52 degree drives. So you can calibrate them to any maximum point like I did here to about 32 degrees. Now, since I've maxed it out, and I'm gonna trim it down again just a little bit, and then I'm gonna trim it up till it stops. And this is why I say, leave a little bit of room between the swim, swim platform and the drive. I'm gonna click the up button again. So down, come up, shuts off. But then I wanna make sure is it all the way up, I'm gonna tap that button. So I can get an extra couple of degrees out of it. So remember, keep that little distance between the drive and the swim platform if you're calibrating this. Once that's once you're calibrated, it's done. You don't have to do it anymore. Um, and that's the whole secret to it. Now, if the drive is that high, it will also with EVC won't let me start the drive because it's too high. Now, if you have a issue where you lose the trim center and you need to trim it up again. You can simply hold that trim button up on EVCD to the center mounts, and if that doesn't work, hold the neutral button in and then hold the trim up button up. So that's so you can get it on a trailer if the trim sensor does fail. So I hope you liked the video and it helps you understand how to do the uh, calibration for trimming up the drive, setting your trim limits with EVCD or E, 
Uh, changing the trim sunder is a not easy task, I would say. So I would leave that to a Volvo technician for sure. If you're not really mechanically inclined, it is a bit of a, a chore to do, say the least. Um, the way to set it and to set it up again um, is around 11 ohms and then install it. You have a little bit of leeway there. You get it pretty close. EVC allows you a, a flexibility of having the trim sender set in. As long as it's in that ballpark range, it doesn't have to be perfect at 11 ohms. It could be at 10 ohms, 9 ohms, 12 ohms, somewhere in there, and it will take up that slack. If it's a mechanical engine where you're using um, just the trim sensor and a gauge, then you really want that right at 11 ohms when you install it with the drive all the way down. Oh, if you like the video, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.